Welcome back to the Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And behind us, we have the freaking Braptor. Yes! Let's talk about the exterior, Craig. Let's do it. So first things first, this thing is wide as heck. Get an angle right here, Craig. If you look just right, the inside of the tire block is outside of the headlight. That's freaking crazy. That's how wide this thing is. Ford has made this work by paper machine on some fenders here. I'm kidding. These are actually really solid. They actually don't move around. I thought they would. They protect the paint. They protect the paint and they are not being the guy with his tire too big that's just throwing stuff everywhere. So they get the job done, but they're not for everyone. I've had a lot of people say, God, that looks stupid. <laughs> I've had a lot of people also say, God, that's amazing. So it's, I'm not sure where I stand on it. Comment below. Do these look good or not? I don't know. Everyone under 13 seems to like them. Everyone over that is a mixed bag. So now what makes the Braptor, the Braptor, Craig, mm. standard 37 inch tires yes. right here. BFG KO2s, and yes, there's KO3s coming soon, but these are KO2s, and driving this thing for a week has solidified our opinion that this might be the best truck tire on the planet. Mm. Best all-rounder, um, just because it's so good at the highway and the everyday driving, rain, sand, wet, dry. Are there better mud trains? Sure. Are there better highway tires? Maybe, but not much better, put it that way. That's how good these are. Um, and they're very, very quiet. And we'll talk about noise in just a minute, Craig, but something that keeps this thing as quiet as it is, is the felt line fender liner. Yes. That's like really impressive. So this is something that, this is just, when people say, oh yeah, but I can get the cheap one and build it. You can't get that kind of stuff. You're not gonna get that to fit right with an aftermarket fender flutter. So that's pretty cool. We do have the Fox Live Valve 3.1 inch shock. Same technology pulled right off the F-150 Raptor. And that's right, this is the first Raptor outside of the F-150 family. We're gonna have another Raptor Ranger coming next year and we are really excited about that because it's basically this with a roof and a bed. So pretty excited about that. Um, we do have our accessory tie downs. This is if you have a canoe on the roof. We've had Broncos before and we've talked about that. You also have a, an accessory that can bolt in here and bolt to the roof rack and that would be actually a steel cable to keep brush from hitting the windshield. Kind of neat, it works. Up front, we have the signature design headlight. This thing lights up right here. And your daytime running lights are actually just orange beams with a halo around the light. Looks really cool. Hard to see in our light in here. There we go. There it is all the way around. Also, because it's a Raptor and it is as wide as it is, it has the three marker lights in the middle. Now, the uh, actual width of this is the body is narrow enough to not need those lights, but the track width is wide enough that it needs them. So that is a standard Raptor package. Um, something that's not standard to the normal Bronco is this light. There's actually a running light right here that is a part of that. Turn these guys on. There we go. So you see this running light right here. That's part of the running light package. It has to be on the exterior side, just like you would have on the normal Raptor pickup. On the side rails, that has these shin splitters, but also these step for people that are shorter and need them. This one's kind of awkward for me because the truck is tall enough. I almost need it, but then the opening's short enough. When I stand on it, I can't quite get in. It's awkward. Good news is you can unbolt it right here take the actual lip off and you have a really solid rock rail as standard, it comes with that. Okay, moving right along, we have the optional $1,000 decal package that makes it look sillier. But if you're into this kind of thing, you're probably gonna wanna have that. Where, where's the B? Oh, no, yeah, what? Well, the B Raptor, B Raptor. Okay, so typical Bronco fashion, this has the ultra, almost quieter, molded in color 2.0 top. Last year's Bronco that we drove had the 1.0, and we've modified this one with some custom tape. Oh, aftermarket. Aftermarket, yeah. This is the only mod this thing needs. And if you're doing, I'm just gonna put this out there. If you're doing more than 75 miles an hour, like Texas highways, we do have 85 mile an hour speed limits here. At that speed, it sounds like a window is cracked. If you put this piece of tape right here, solved. Window's closed. And it matches the paint. And it matches perfectly. It's actually color matched, worked out great. Ace Hardware has you covered. Um, but the good news is under 70, it is actually really quiet. This is quieter than the Molding Color 1.0, but there are still issues. You can go onto the forums and they'll tell you where it's leaking and it's everywhere. So there's that. Um, coming around to the back, these taillights. Craig, you see how these are standing off? They're a little bit further back? Yeah. Do you know why they're further out? Blue pill. <laughs> no, not the, not the blue pill. Because this spare tire is so big, DOT regulations require that the taillight is visible from certain angles that this tire is blocking. So they had to build a standoff to get the taillight further out. That's not just because they want it to be a little bit longer. Um, that's what that's about. Check out this third taillight, Craig. These are your three running lights. These are usually on the cab of a regular Raptor. They're there for a function. They get the job done. The bad news is your rear view mirror is now virtually worthless. <laughs> so you, you're, it's kind of like the U-Haul truck special. 
I took the rear view mirror and just put it on my kids so I can make silly faces at them while we're driving. That was a better function than using this. So this is a terrible here. minivan. This is the worst minivan I've ever driven. Uh, that's the bad news. Cool news is it's the best driving minivan I've ever been in. Check this out. It says Raptor, but it's mirrored. So when you look in the rearview mirror and you're annoyed you can't see out the back, you at least know what you're driving. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, it does have the Bronco door that comes all the way open. There's a bunch of cool accessories. You can bolt like tables that flip down and all kinds of hipster stuff. But come down here. I'm gonna show you something important. See this itch? You see why that's a four inch drop down? Because a two inch drop down wasn't enough to put the trailer on with that giant spare tire. You've got to have a drop hitch for it. Luckily, Ford has added two braces that shoot out, and we'll show that in our technical review, and tie back to the chassis to increase the towing rating from 3,500 pounds to 4,500 pounds on the Raptor only. That was because they know some of these guys are gonna wanna bring a side-by-side -side or maybe a small boat to where they're going with their Raptor. So that's pretty cool. This guy right here, they're calling this a beaver tail. Do you know what this is? This little plate? That's there because in their chassis testing and their off-road testing, they kept ripping the trailer harness cover right off. So this little plate, that is Raptor specific as well. So all you know on Raptor Bronco guys, go find that, that's a pretty cool deal. Feast your eyes on the magnificent Dyson three liter twin turbo V6 from Ford. Now this is not a Dyson, but it is damn sure not a Coyote and that is a heartbreaking situation. But this thing gets the job done. It's got massive oil cooling. It makes 418 horsepower, 440 foot pounds of torque, and it has anti-lag to keep this thing spooled between shifts it is definitely like a rally car, like a rally car or a Hyundai Veloster N. They all kind of do it these days. But anyways, it's really good. It gets it done. And um, we do wish it had more personality like a V8 would have. But you know what? That pedal down, open that exhaust. So adjustable valves, you just quit carrying so much and it certainly gets the job done. Interior time. Let's do it. All right, onto the interior Raptor specific Brian. We get this blue package, which is an optional package. I think it's I don't know, about $2,000, but it gives you this blue with the suede inserts and the orange kind of poking through the insert and then the orange on the seat belt. Code orange, babe. One of the cool Code things about orange. any Bronco is you get a center arm wish, which is hard to find in a lot of cars. Um, the only other Raptor specific thing here is we have a little orange strap there for behind the seat. Of course, and you have your Molly straps right here. Yeah, in the back that's an every Bronco. Yeah. Let's go to the front. On to the business end of the Raptor interior of the Raptor, and we've got a lot more Raptor specific things. Let's start here with the gauge cluster. This is probably the coolest thing that you don't get in the other Broncos. You get, this is in performance mode right here. You can toggle that and get in traditional dials. And then of course it changes with the mode. So if you're in sport mode or you're in off-road mode, you get different things and different cool things and automatic shifts, just like in any other Ford product. That part's pretty cool. With that, the other specific thing is you get the steering wheel is beefy. It's leather wrapped. Man, it is nice. It looks really good. You get carbon fiber accents throughout. That's another package that they've added on. That's $3,000. $3,000. I don't think it's real carbon fiber, but it sure looks like real carbon fiber. Uh, but it's, it is a really thick handle. I love the little thumb locks where you put your thumb. It feels really good. And when you're at speed, you, you appreciate that, especially on a dirt road. And it's heated. And it's heated, yes. The other cool thing... Um, Let's, a little game let's, let's play, I like to call, find the missing chip because of the COVID shortage. Well, normally you'd have a little temperature gauge right here and it would tell you, but they just put a little temperature icon. But that's okay though, because you can still see it up here whenever you adjust it and turn it on. It's right there, so solves that problem. Touch screen is really good, it works well. Just like all Fords, it's weird because the Apple CarPlay is only in part of the screen, but you know, whatever. That aside, when you're, here's the best part though, I wanna show you, Brian, when we're in Baja mode, um, not rock crawl, Baja mode, it puts you in Look at that. So the whole time you're driving, that's up, right? The whole time you're driving, I don't care if you're at 70 miles an hour or 10, that stays on, it doesn't go away, that is nice. That is awesome, and the whole point of that is that if you're bashing up King of the Hammers, that thing never shuts off on you, you can see what you're about to hit. And of course you can change it, you can see what's by the wheels, so you, and you can change it as you're going along at speed, it's awesome, and it just stays, gosh, that's appreciative. Um, with that, um, you get all the accoutrements of any Bronco Badlands and up. The disconnecting sway bar, front locker, rear locker, uh, trail turn assist, traction control off, and hazards, which you might have some in this thing. Um, with that, Brian, that's about it as far as Raptor-specific things go. Um, let's get this thing out on the road and see what it can do and uh, get some 0-60 to times and things like that. Sounds good. All right. All right, Brian. Got it in sport mode. Too high. Thought while it's on, it's five horse. Oh yeah, exactly. Yep. Raptor, all the Raptor modes engaged. 
Exhaust as loud as it can be? Oh, wait. It is now. Off-road use only? Yes. Hit it! <laughs> A lot of suspension Jeez, travel. Please. A lot of. Oh. <laughs> That's a drag suspension. Everything. And 60. Oh. Okay. Everything feels faster in here because of the suspension. I'm going to say that first. Great. It's, it's the Miata effect. It leans it on its doors when you turn. It's great. <laughs> and by the way, that was a 60 in 5.73 seconds. That's not bad for uh, something that's not a 392. Mmm. Glad you brought that up because that's under four or four and a half. All right, I'm going to put this in quiet mode for our audience. Thank you. And now it's silent. They all thank you, yes. And also we're doing under 45 miles an hour, so it's not really windy in here. Well, and we got our aftermarket tape. We do, yeah, that's that helped. Okay, let's get into it, dude. All right, so we've reviewed a Bronco before. We have, yep. But not the Raptor. Not the Raptor. Is this ride and drive deserving of the Raptor name? Absolutely, freaking lutely I agree. And do you want to know why? Why? Because they took an F-150 Raptor and shoved it underneath the Bronco. As best they could. As best they it's could. It's not an yeah. F-150 chassis. Don't no, think no, that. No, 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 it's not. No, but in terms of like the, you look at the upper and lower control numbers on the front. As far as some driveline components go. You can tell where they got that from. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good thing because we love the Raptor pickup. We've owned one in the past. We've mm -hmm. done a big mm -hmm. shoot on them before. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Big fan of the Raptor uh, proponents. And the biggest thing I come away with, because there's still compromises, right? This mm -hmm. still has the, the roof noise that is just part of having a convertible. Yeah. That's how it goes. This is the 2.0 top. We'll, we'll talk about that more yeah. in a minute. This feels like an engineered experience. Yep. And what I mean by that is they didn't just shove a V8 in it and make it a hot rod, which is part of what we love about 392. Yes. But this is a weapon and a tool for the job. If someone said, hey, Mr. King of the Hammers, we need you to come run King of the Hammers. Yeah. This will do it. This would be a good support vehicle for a Baja run. Oh, wait a minute. That's happened recently. So <laughs> anyways, it's really good at that. And what I'm, what I'm getting at is that this thing is completely authentic. Yes. There is not a decal package that, it, this is not a Trail Boss or a Rebel or even a trimmer F-150 that's like a little better. Yeah. No, no, this is a freaking machine. Yep. And it looks, I'll be honest, I don't think it looks good. I think it looks stupid as hell. But you know what? In the coolest way possible. But, well, and kind of like in the fighter jet way, right? Like yes, in anything yes. that, the reason it looks that way is because it's all functional. It, right, those fenders so, aren't there to look bulbous. They're there because they have to, a job to do. It, it may not look the greatest, but it's, everything's got a function. There's a, right. there's, there's, yeah, that's just true there's a design element to some of it, but it's all functional. Yeah, exactly. And, and yes, Raptor to Ford is like M is the BMW. That's exactly. It's not yes. a waste of time. It's not just a badge. It's not just a sticker thing. Right. It's legit. Right. So it just gets it done. It just yeah. does the job and doesn't matter. And you can just not drive on the road sometimes and it's fine. And it just soaks it up. And look, the Ultra 4 vehicles inspired this thing. This is close to a factory Ultra 4 yeah, vehicle. Absolutely. I mean, they actually make a hot, hotter version than this, but it costs a lot of money. Uh, right, right, but right. right. This they is are, pretty quick. That one has a coyote, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this is really close to that. So it really is. Okay, so ride and drive dynamics. Let's talk about that motor. So they ended up going with the three liter V6 instead of the 3.5 EcoBoost. Right. The nano architecture, right. Or the five liter Coyote. Which is a tragedy, but yes. Your thoughts on that? Did they make the right to call? There's some <clears throat> reasons behind that, of course, but. Short and sweet, it gets the job done. It's totally capable. I wish I had the personality of the Coyote. Yes. Or, or the grunt and bore size of the 3.5, because the 3.5 yeah. does have more torque than this. Yeah. And this thing is not a lightweight. Right. It's not really lighter than the 150, actually. So no. when you put all this crap on there, it's like the yeah. same weight of a 150. It's fast enough, but it's not, I wouldn't call it fast. And they've done a lot of magic tricks to tune it to make it work. Oh, the tuning's great. Yeah, yeah. But basically they had to go with the nano architecture because it's on the Ranger assembly line right. and the Bronco assembly line. And and frame-wise, the 3.5 wouldn't fit. Right, exactly. The 5.0, Sounds like possibly would fit. The problem with the 5.0s, the engineers, they didn't have enough torque, grunt, low end grunt, right, that they wanted for this application. And they, this has got the low end grunt, and it's got the turbo trick where it stays on in All Baja mode. And, and, and this, so they solve that. Exactly. And this has anti lag. And yeah. that's part of the trick, is that the torque is always there. Um, okay. Now, suspension. <laughs> so let's <laughs> talk about the suspension because it's a little more controversial, I think, between us. We don't run exactly on the same page there. Not really, no. But uh, thoughts on that? Um, highway, off-road, whatever, go ahead. Look, I don't live in your neighborhood, so I have no complaints. I know in your neighborhood, the roads... But it's not much of my neighborhood. It's also <coughs> county roads around there. So, full candidacy, I didn't do dirt roads like you did. Okay. 
I, I didn't have, I, but I did take it to Houston. I've got about mm-hmm. 700 miles in this thing. Mm-hmm. And my only complaint is that at higher highway sustained speeds, it's a convertible. It's noisy, yeah. Right. And I'm not even going to like get into that anymore. I'm going to make the joke about the tape on the outside and stop the wind noise <laughs> because over 80 miles an hour, it, it sounds like a window's cracked somewhere. Yeah. And it's right here. Yeah, you keep checking the window switches all the time. All the time. And yeah. in fact, in the rubberized, which is great. So if yeah. you spill your coffee, they're good to go. Yeah. Even my son in the back said, why do I feel air <laughs> blowing by my head? And it's because the, the joint behind his head and the ceiling. I think on the highway, its manners are really good. In fact, I pulled a trailer with this thing and it tows really well. Granted, it was an empty trailer, but I've towed that trailer exact configuration in full-size trucks. And I've noticed it being there. Mm-hmm. I did not know it was there. I had to remind myself there was a trailer behind me. It did great. I think the, the diversity of the suspension is incredible. And the tuning of the live valve is just, that's the magic. Yes. That's what makes it work. You, which, what do you say? You were saying that the 150 was Well, here's my, three. look, here's my problem. My problem is this is magical in its own way. Right. Um, but I found that in my neighborhood, I found it interesting that the Ranger Trimmer actually rode better okay. and on the county roads around my house. So 60 miles an hour and under on potholy roads, this was a little choppy and it, it kicked. It did the, the pickup truck kick thing. Okay. You could feel that. Okay. And the versus, Trimmer didn't do that? Versus the Ranger Trimmer didn't do that and the F-150 Raptor didn't do that. Okay. So this is a little less magical in all uh, scenarios, but... When I took it on a dirt road, at and speed. I got 70 miles an hour, dirt road at speed, I'm like, this is what this thing's designed for. Yeah, it was I was gonna incredible. Say, I think the problem was you're doing under 70 in your neighborhood, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> That's the issue. Fair enough. Because this thing at speed is just good to go. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring back a flashback. Who is this thing for? <laughs> Someone that's got a lot of money and needs a toy. Okay, good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I was going to say sleeve tat, affliction, <laughs> white oak leaves. Yeah. That's who this is for. Sure, that what guy it, too. What is sad is that all this engineering will be wasted on that person. Unless they live in like Glamis or something and they're really going to use it, maybe they will. Um, I hope that all of these get jumped by their owners or something. I hope so too. This thing reminded me of a, an awesome side by side, like the Ooh, loaded okay. up Can Am okay. or Yamaha, whatever, side by side. And to me, begs the question of do you get a regular SUV or truck and a side-by-side for $80,000? Or do you just get this and not have to have a side-by-side in the trailer and all that yeah. stuff? I guess it depends on your parking situation. Sure. There could be an argument made for this, for sure. And because you can do the doors off thing. And that, and that we did that the last Bronco. It's yeah. too cold right now. It's, uh, we're knocked yeah. on December right now. Yeah. It's too cold for this thing, but to do doors off. But we've done that and it just changes the experience completely. Yeah, look, when I was out on d- at dirt on speed, I'm like, this is like a side-by-side. <laughs> it's yeah. that awesome. Yeah, it is that good. This is your Raptor with no overhangs. The yeah. Raptor F-150, the yeah. Raptor is the ultimate off-roader from Ford right now. This is the, I yeah. get it. This is the best off-roader Ford makes. It's freaking awesome, and it's authentic as hell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Check us on the socials. That's it.